I'm actually laugh, not laugh. into that. Laugh. 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 Of course, it's true. It's there all true. Is. It's true. It's real. Well, well, Everything I'm telling you is true. Everything I'm telling you is real. It, it exists. It's true. Well, what, I, what I'm what I'm saying is, is, is you say your life is is your is your medium, and oh, and, and it's done for an audience of one. But all the the rest of the world, they can't really understand. They people see me, and I I delight at presenting a fantastic spectacle to people in terms of my technicality. You know, I'm all teched out. I'm strapped with every kind of layer of equipment just just to be walking because I need it. That's why when you're four, when you're four or five miles from your house, you better have a pair of tweezers if your dog is a. You better, you better have a compression bandage in case he slices his leg open or you knock a thing in there. If you don't have a compression bandage, if you don't have a compression bandage and you do something like this, okay, okay, it'll bleed it, it, as you're walking. It'll bleed. It won't stop. It'll fill your shoe or boot up with blood if you don't have a compression bandage. Mm -hmm. so, and I present this fantastical spectacle uh, to people. But the, I understand. They can't understand it because it's so fantastical. It's kind of like the Lone Ranger. And the Lone Ranger would come galloping into town. There would be all the schmuck townspeople, right? And here the Lone Ranger would be wearing this mask, a skin-tight outfit, a really elaborate two-gun rig mounted with silver with chrome pistols and just a theatrical outfit. He'd be mounted on this beautiful Palomino. He'd have this trippy Indian named Tonto with him. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? And, and if the Lone Ranger would ride out again, what would they always say about the Lone Ranger? You don't remember. It, but not. They would always say, Who was that masked man? Yeah, who was that masked man? Okay, that's, that's what I do to society. Well, let me ask you. They, they, don't, they can't get their mind around it even. You, you, you that's why up. they remember me. That's why I can't go anywhere without a hundred people calling me. I bet there's people, excuse me, I bet there's people that have called in that met me one time over ten years ago for five minutes you're and remember right. me. You're absolutely right. <laughs> <laughs> which, brings up, which brings up something interesting that you're, that you're talking about and, and why, you know, one, one thing I'm curious about. What? You, you, bumped into a, uh, you bumped into a Cherokee County deputy up on some private hunting property back in yeah. it October or something yeah. and that was widely publicized after a year, you mm -hmm. know, after we caught up with one another and did you hear that? Did he get on tape my joke about deer hunters? Yeah. What's the three reasons the deer hunters? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now, I made that well, up. Well, I'm they, a comedian too. Well, see, I mean, you, <laughs> you threw that. You threw it out there to him that you were a uh, twenty. Uh, that you oh, were um, a that's my standard. That, I finally realized what I was doing. Is it? I, you know, I, I'm doing this day after day. And I finally realized it about doing not combat patrols where you got to stay alert on. Uh, that. Well, it's not, yeah, combat patrols and uh, that's it, and and land navigation. For, it's exactly it. Mm -hmm. Every time I go out walking my dog, Curry. Yeah, every time I go out walking my dog, I, I'm like a police officer. I understand that there's a significant chance that before I come home, I'm gonna be fighting for my life. Right. Every time I walk my dog anywhere. Right. You know why? Because go go and take a seven mile run through the neighborhoods. You'll see you hear a million dogs barking. Well, all it takes is one gate left open, one door left open. I got a Rottweiler this big. One time, I'd run a route for well, over ten years, and I never knew the dog was there. And I'm passing by a house, and 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 I hear I hear a guy go yelling, "Bad dog! Bad dog! Bad dog!" And I look, and that was his dog's name. It was a big ass Rottweiler coming for me. He had gotten loose out of the house, and that was the dog's name, Bad Dog. <laughs> I mean, that's the way it is, man, you know. It's like police work, you know. I mean, you know, 90 minutes of boredom and 10 minutes of let her, you know, puck her up, shit, man, right? But I, 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 it's happened so much, though, I fought so, and again, I say fighting, I shake the situation rather than kick ass. Because if you kick ass, it's going to run your day regardless. Even if you're right, it may not go your way. You don't, you don't, you don't have a bad, so, you know. So, yeah, uh, so, oh, anyway, I realized that, you know, about 1995 or so, I realized that that's what I'm doing. I do just like you do on, uh, for instance, a, a mech. We were mechanized, too, in addition to being airborne, which meant we had armored personnel carriers, the one 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 M113, if you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's typical mechanized stuff. You, you get in the track, you drive somewhere, you unmask, you form a perimeter, you run a patrol, you come back, you 
you unload again, move. It's just a war of movement, you know. You move, get out. You don't hang around that track. It's a good target, you know. You don't sit in a damn track. You, know, you get out any time it stops, you know, because you're going to be safer in there. RPG will take that track out, man. It's got an 80-gallon gas tank. Whoa. And, 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 and that's what I did with the truck, with the dog. I, you know, I'd get the truck or, or a vehicle, move, get out, get my shit together, run a patrol, come back, eat, you know, sleep, move. Get out, get my shit together, run a patrol, and I, I, I finally realized that I was just on perpetual field maneuvers. And I said, well, it ain't much of a life, but hell, it's a life. Well, when, you, when, when, you, you, when you throw that stuff out like that, the, the, I'm, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to figure out, you know, you, you call it artistry, or, or whatever. Is it, is it, <laughs> well, you're not calling it insanity. No, 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 no. I, I don't, I'm, I'm not saying that. No, I, you're I, not. Th I don't think you're insane, but no, I'm sorry. sorry. I said that oh, okay. no. What, what I'm, what I'm getting at is, is, is it almost like a little acting on your behalf to, I don't know, kind of steer this law enforcement officer away from you, or? Well, oh, with it? him, no. I was being perfect, I, perfectly uh, candid with him. I steer him away from me. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm, I'm just trying to figure out what, you know. Well, here's the thing. Uh, police officers are individuals, so of course they're going to run across the whole spectrum of human behavior. But right. there's there's a large number of police officers that are highly experienced. Right. And that they are pros. Right. And they recognize a pro when they see a pro. Right. And I'm a pro. Right. Okay. I'm not some bum out there sleeping in my van. Right. I'm a pro. Right. He saw my map collection because I was showing him maps, man. I got a, I got a, I, and these are just the maps I carry. Right. I got a rubber made, 36 gallon rubber made container full of maps. Right. Area maps, topo maps, every kind of map. Okay. Right. You're not just laying around your train. I, I got, there. I got a, a, a map collection that's so exotic. I mean, it's, it's, it's wild. It's got every kind of area map, every way, we're from Shining Rock Wilderness to all the way down to uh, Ocala National Forest in Florida. I can pull out any map, and I got Topa, actual USGS Topa map, so much of the North Georgia area, every kind of, every, every kind of map. I got Cherokee National Forest, Nanahawa National Forest, every national forest. Not only that, I have multiples of many of them, because you lose a map and you only have one map. I, right. I've done it. it. It screws you up. It's hard to get another one, too. Well, in the, in the interest of time, let's if you don't care, let's let's go back to where did we get up to? The early eighties. About eighty, nineteen eighty. Mm -hmm. Early eighties. Right after the divorce. You were still in Atlanta at that time, and you were. Back yeah, yeah, there. and uh, uh, when I got busted, uh, I had to go straight for six months. I got a job. What did you get arrested for? Fraudulent no. telephone solicitation. It was a misdemeanor then, though. No. Now it's a felony. What uh, what what type of oh, telephone fraud okay. were you doing at that point? Well, the usual, Georgia Veterans Journal, Georgia Inspectors Journal, right. Southeast Regional Council, mm -hmm. Georgia Youth Support Project. You know, back then, the, the BBB had a list of, of charities that were not approved for given. They didn't say disapproved. They, you know, they just said not approved for given. Don't meet their guidelines or wouldn't respond is what it was. They were on one sheet, and it was just tiny little type. So you had like three, four columns. So you had like... Uh, probably 300 charities on, on this one sheet, 250 charities. Well, I was like, just me was like four or five of them who was on that, and they, and they were me, you know. You know, <laughs> you know yeah, Southeast Regional Council, uh, the, uh, the Georgia Christian. <laughs> I, I call it the Georgia Christian Index because just out of my subconscious, I came up with that, but actually the... Uh, the name of the, it turned out that the name of the official Southern Baptist publication is the Christian Index. And, you know, and I call it my Southeast Regional Council because somewhere out of my subconscious I had seen Southern Regional Council, mm -hmm. which is a decades old organization, mm -hmm. quasi government, that kind of thing. And somewhere I'd heard that and, and thinking I had no a priori knowledge of that, I thought I came up with it on my own. Southeast, but but it was pretty damn close. What right. year was that you got arrested for that? 79. 79. Yeah, probably about November. November. And uh, so I played that out, uh, and I went and got a job. I had to quit what I, well, they took everything. <laughs> and uh, everything. 
And uh, I did a search warrant on my house, too. And uh, so I got a job for about six months. I got a job till July. Mm. And by then I was long divorced. What, I, what I, kind of job? Uh, on the phone selling industrial chemicals. Okay. Long distance on a watch line. Back then they had wide area telephone service, you know, dedicated long distance right. lines back then. Right. Yeah. And uh, got that job, kept that. What, what, what was, was the name of that place? It's no longer existent. Uh, Kim Manufacturing, K-E-M. Yeah, I'm so that was what, like, right after you got out of 81-ish, like the beginning of 81, or? Right. Probably, if you got picked up in November. Oh, no, I, I uh, in 1980, I went, uh, in July, I kept that to July of 1980. Okay. And then what did you do? Oh, I uh, went back to my old habits. Well, tough old on the job now. Yeah. Yeah. Where were you? I asked a guy one time in DeKalb County Jail. 20, oh, it was in 79. I was in there on that bus. The guy was telling me his life story. These were all, all of them were white guys at the time, you know. And it was, if you'd have told me, you know, one day DeKalb County would be majority black, that would have been the furthest thing from my mind. This was back then. DeKalb County was a white suburban county. Mm -hmm. DeKalb County Joe, this guy was telling me the story of his life, and it was just, you know, a tragedy, you know, the guy was getting in, yeah, he's a recidivist, okay? And I, I said, so I asked him, some of the truest words ever spoken, and I asked him, well, why? Why? Why do you keep doing this? Well, why? You know, why? And he said, because I can't get up and go to work. And, you know, if that describes most criminals, I, I mean, that, 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 I mean, you could say a criminal is that someone that does, breaks the law, gets away with it, and keeps doing it until he gets caught. And that's a good definition. But another good definition is one that can't get out and go to work in the morning. That's the artist. Don't you understand? That's the artist in me. Artists don't get up and go to work in the morning. Artists. That's why they call them con artists. You see. <laughs> right? So, okay, anyway, anyway, okay, listen, I started doing that, and uh, I kept doing it uh, through the 80s. I took a bus in uh, 87. Uh, the, my uh, G, uh, GCIG, uh, or, or, or my computer printout, has, has it set by taking, but the actual charge is set by deception, T by D. Misdemeanor again. Right. The woman lured me over there to Dunwoody. Mount Bourbon Road in Ashford, Dunwoody, right in the heart of Dunwoody, a fucking yuppie woman lured me over there for to pick up a $25 check and then kept me waiting for the check. She was really good. She was pretending she was on the phone and she would come out and let me see her on the phone. Kept me waiting there for 30 minutes, you know. When when I told my criminal friends about it, they said, oh, I can never sit there waiting for 30 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Taught me a lesson. <laughs> Taught me a lesson. Yeah. And they showed up. To Cab, to Cab County North again, and they showed up, uh, arrested me. They they got the check. They got the woman complaining. They found my car. Okay, the car I was driving was a stolen car. Really? It had been stolen from a rental company that I'd been running from. And uh, what kind of car was it? Uh, Chevy. Uh, it was 1986. Uh, your Chevy. Uh, not Cavalier, not Citation. Oh, there was a million of these cars. Anyway, it's a generic rental car, right. Chevy, Chevy Euro, something Euro Sport. And uh, I've been renting these cars from them. Mm -hmm. 14 a day, unlimited mileage. Hmm. That was a killer. Mm -hmm. Man, I could go out and, you know, if I save all my stuff I had to pick up, I could just rent the thing once a week and go put 200 miles on it for seven cents a mile. You can't. <laughs> You know, you can't do, you can get something for seven cents a mile, just jump on it, you know, because, you know, your car's going to cost you 30 cents, you know, per <laughs> it is, you know, these days it will. So I do that, not only that, if I rent it on a Friday, they used a key job, they were closed on uh, Saturdays and Sundays, and they were at storefront, snappy rental cars, storefront shopping centers, and uh, so if I rented it on a Friday, they had no way of determining when I bought it, brought it in, I'd bring it back Sunday night. So it was, it was sweet, but they finally stopped that. And I had it, and uh, I had a bunch of uh, rental forms that, you know, from actually renting the cars. Mm -hmm. They were like the third copy. You couldn't read them anyway. 
Right. And that was not only a proof of ownership, but it was also proof of insurance. They had checked off if he had purchased an insurance mm -hmm. check. And so I just drove it on that, had dealer drive out tags on it. And at that time, dealer drive out tags were just not the issue. To, they were just the old you right. know, Joe Jones shovel. Yeah, and right. Just yeah, just the, the, on there. The, I mean, one time a cop in Tennessee, in a, in a state park, High Falls State Park in Tennessee, I was up there with a stolen car and, and uh, Park police or police officer, some jurisdiction saw me and he followed me and followed me and followed me. I, said, I knew he was following me inside this park. And I was going to the office to pick up a map there. So I pulled in and parked and I got out and he pulled in and got out, was walking in. He says, uh, Is that what y'all have in uh, Georgia there? Those things? I said, Yeah, yeah, that's what they use. He said, Well, it's no good for a police work. Uh, yeah, I was, I was thinking, Little does he know what you're saying? When was that? Uh, 87 or 80, I drove that car till, till 80, I drove it for years, I drove it for years. The wait, wait a minute, when did you run it? Oh, you mean stole it? Uh, yeah. <laughs> 86. Oh, okay. I drove so, yeah. it to 89. The first day I used it, the reason I used it is I just 